number one, those first three bars set up the strumming pattern for the next three. Here we go, 60 beats per minute. One, two, three, four, one. Yeah, so this one, the strumming pattern here is the same strumming pattern here. All right, 60. One, two, three, four, one and two, three, four and one. Twenty. One, two, three, four. One and two, three, four and one and two, three and four. One, two and three, four and one and two, three, four and one and two, three and four. One, two and three, four and done. One eighty. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. three back to the old thing now that we've worked up all those different rhythms it's time to try this again 60 one two three four one and two and three four one two and three and four one two One, two, three, four, one and two and three, four, 
number four, three things to learn following along with Guitar Pro. Good idea. In fact, yeah, definitely do so. It's going to make it a lot more fun and help you hear all this stuff come together. So, as far as, <clears throat> as, far as practicing things and like getting things down, uh, breaking things up into small pieces, very good idea. So be able to play this and then be able to play this. Be able to play that on its own and that on its own. So, like use Guitar Pro's looping feature. You can do that or just do it with a metronome. If you want to metronome this up to speed, that, well, you'd be going past speed really since it's already starting at 60. But yeah, you can just put this on loop on Guitar Pro um, in case you don't know about it. Hold on. Put that on, and it will it will loop whatever you got highlighted. But yeah, to get make sure you can play that by itself comfortably, this by itself comfortably, and basically each little phrase here nice and comfortable. Um, and then with the chords, you know, practice the bar chords will be the most challenging thing I'd imagine. So for that, if you remember, hold the chord down to start. So before putting in a song, just be able to make sure you can hold that and hear all the notes ringing out clearly. And then you'll try the different places, pick each note one at a time so you can hear everything. Same thing here, and then of course here. Power chord is going to be a lot easier. I think you can already just jump into the chord, hit it, and just try different places as you go, and so on. So. I'm just going to do this with the metronome. So here we go with the lead part first. And as far as like video next time, uh, yeah, you can just play along with Guitar Pro. Play the scale thing first, and then you could go to the uh, distorted chords next, since you're already going to have distortion on. And you can do the clean stuff uh, last. But either way, as long as it's all in there, it doesn't really matter what order. I'd say do the most difficult thing first though. Yeah, whatever's gonna be the most challenging, do that first. So this way, you get it out of the way. All right, so here we go, the lead parts. One, two, three, four. transitioning from one type of the A minor to another, don't worry about all four beats ringing out completely, okay? So, like, once you hit this chord for the second time, go ahead and start getting ready for that next chord. We just want to make sure when you're there, it sounds good. So, this is a bit of an exception to the rule of, you know, changing chords at the very last possible second. So, this is a kind of a, a different thing we're focusing on here. I just want you to be able to play these clean chords uh, to hear all the notes ringing out well. The timing of this stuff is going to get better as we continue to work on things. But uh, give yourself as much time as you need to to get over to the new chord and hear it. So basically, you get to one, two, three, four, one. You can start moving over there so you're ready for the new beat or the new bar which is very different than what we talked about, making sure you move chords when you're supposed to versus moving the chord to be there on time. Clean chords are a different story. They are arguably much more difficult to play. So I'm more concerned right now about you hearing all the notes versus having the best timing of switching them right now. So anyway, that's why you can change a little early for this stuff. One, two, three, four. 
two, three, four, one. Distorted stuff. So if, when you got those giant jumps from you know down here to up here, go ahead and change to the new chord a little early if you need to. That's fine for this sort of thing. I just want you to see all these different places you can play an A5 chord. One, two, three, four. something like this really in a song anyway this is all for exercise purposes all to get you familiar with all these different types of a minor and a5 chords and having that memorized okay and the other thing so moving on with the uh, theory stuff hold on So minor chords next. So what I want you to do is still use your major scale to start. It's like for the C minor chord there. You still start with that C major scale. Just looking for those first five notes again. So as always, we start with the C scale for a C based chord. In this case, we C minor. So we put in the C notes. And then we go up. One, two, three. That's an E, but we need a flat third now because it's a minor chord. So we take the E and flat it, so that becomes E flat. So we put in the E flat, lowercase b for the flat symbol, and then one, two, three, four, five, which is still G. So you can check your work as you do this. So basically, C major chord right here, if that's the third interval, a flat third is just making that E flat. That would turn it into C minor. For the F chord right here, we take this third interval, which is A, and make it A flat. That would give us F minor. G chord, we just take the B, we flat that to make it a flat third, then you got G minor. So try not doing that first, See about going through it the way I just described or demonstrated using the major scale and then flattening the third. I want you to do it that way so you can actively see yourself flattening the third over and over and over again to emphasize that's a flat third. So you're comparing the major third to the minor third over and over and over again. Doing that kind of repetitive stuff makes things stick. It really does. So see what you come up with first. Try not to look at the major chords yet. Fill all this stuff in first. Then go back to the major chords, compare what you got down here to what I just talked about, basically just flattening the middle note, and see if you got all the right stuff. And yeah, whenever you got it filled in, send it on over. Use the same file you sent me to uh, just continue filling in things for the minor chords. Whenever you got it filled in, send it over. Any questions come up with this or any of the other stuff, let me know. All right, see you again next week.